thank you for joining us today. My name is Chad Jones. I'm Vice President Strategy and Product Management with Dynamic Ops. You know, Runbook Automation Technology is a powerful set of tools to automate redundant IT administrative tasks. However, when we start thinking about a cloud application, without being able to put in a user context or business awareness into a Runbook set of tools, you end up quickly spinning Runbooks out of control. Having redundant sets of Runbooks to do the same task with very subtle amounts of parameter differences, all the way down to having to require complex scripts to actually figure out those parameters and try to pass them to Runbooks. All of these are really untenable situations inside of the Runbook automation world. Dynamic Ops provides user-centric and business-aware context that we can provide through a dynamic calculation and hand off to Runbooks, Runbooks such as System Center Orchestrator. Now, the combination of these technologies allows for a very generic, non-redundant set of Runbooks that are highly parameterized that we can pass what is needed as needed to these Runbooks and really get the widest applicability with the least amount of management overhead. Well, we've got a lot to show you today, so let's go ahead and jump to it. Okay, now that we're inside of our demonstration system, what I'm gonna show you first is System Center Orchestrator. So here's our interface for Orchestrator, and we're in the Runbook Designer. Now, the example we're gonna use here is a notify by email Runbook, very basic Runbook. This could be as simple as the example I'm showing you here, or they can be incredibly complex as well. We support all of these. So if we go into, first of all, the initialized data, what you're gonna see here is that we provided rich parameterization inside of this particular runbook. We don't wanna to have to hard code anything into this runbook because then it wouldn't be as applicable, as widely available for the administrator. So we have our mail text, the owner, virtual machine name, other text, and our PG name as well. And that is the front end to actually creating uh, this email. So now, if we go over to the actual action, here we have the details of the action. You know, the subject line, again, this is a send email uh, activity inside of Orchestrator. Who the recipients are, now we just hard-coded this uh, inside of here, we can easily make this a variable as well. The text, and again, we put our variables into this text, and we could put attachment if we needed to as well. So now this runbook is very generic for sending emails, and we can actually pass in any data we'd like. So with that, let me go ahead and move over to our Cloud Automation Center interface. Now, this is the Enterprise Administrator view, and then what we're gonna show you here, first of all, is if we go into our blueprints, here. What we have are our list of blueprints, but we're going to go ahead and move into the RHEL Apache blueprint. Now, remember for Dynamic Ops, a blueprint is the definition of the service. So what we're really seeing here is that we've added into the configuration of this blueprint the ability to send an email as part of the normal workflow. So here's how we define the blueprint. We have our groups that the blueprint's associated with. That's really business units. And then our approval policies, our archive, number of machines you can use, and all the policies around that. Then we have our build information screen. At this point, we're doing a Zen Linux server through WIM. Uh, and then we have our different minimums, maximums, and approval rates, and our costing. But if you'll notice down in custom properties, uh, this is where it gets very interesting inside of our system. So custom properties allows us to actually add a user-centric business awareness to the actual cloud environment. So in the custom properties, uh, it actually works on a hierarchical kind of structure. So I can say at the blueprint level, let's put in one set of custom properties, but you know what, at the provisioning group level, I can actually change those and make them even more granular for that business unit. Now there are three types of custom properties that we offer. The first is a static custom property, where you actually have just a, a hard-coded value inside of the key value pairs here. We also have a user-prompted value, so you can ask the user what they would like to enter into that value. But most importantly, we have a dynamic custom property. A dynamic custom property allows for the attachment of a workflow with a custom property. So when I go through and perform the actions in this workflow, it can kick off and based upon 
connection to third-party systems actually dynamically calculate what that entry should be based on any number of properties. Active Directory membership, go into PeopleSoft and get it a value, uh, Ariba, Remedy, the list goes on and on. So now, inside of this custom set of custom properties, when dealing with System Center Orchestrator, you can see we have our mail text, which is integration works, just very simple. Uh, some of the other texts, our run book name and where our server is. So these top two lines match the parameters that are inside the head end of the actual run book on System Center Orchestrator. I can also turn around and wire this up so I can make a right mouse click uh, action, a custom action that will kick off the ability to tie into that System Center Orchestrator runbook. So first of all, inside of our properties here, we have this thing called Launch Email Runbook. This allows me to check or uncheck inside of the blueprint whether I want this to be available or not. Maybe I want one set of uh, business units to have the ability to do that and another set not to be able to have the ability to do so. I can control that very easily through our security properties. So let's go ahead and switch over into uh, our actual user interface. And now we know this is the user interface because on the left hand side you can see that there's far fewer actual navigation options. So now if I go into my services tier 62, this is already a, a machine that's been provisioned uh, through the system. And if you look on this menu in the context of that services tier 162, we have our launch email runbook because we allowed it again in that security parameters to be associated with this system. I'll go ahead and click launch email runbook. Now what will happen is this will kick off that custom action that simply says take all of the custom properties that are relevant for running this particular runbook and go ahead and pass those off. But those are abstracted away from the user. Now again, if the, we had a custom property that said prompt the user for something, it would actually pop up here. But more importantly, the dynamic nature of the system in a dynamically calculated property will go off as soon as I say, okay, figure out what those properties should be and then pass it off to the runbook. So now I'll go ahead and say, okay. So now in the background, the system's calculating everything it needs to run that, that property. It sends it over to the runbook. And now if we hop back over to the actual orchestrator machine, and we'll actually run a refresh here. So now you can see in the log history that the actual runbook operated successfully and sent out an email. Now if I go to my email client, you'll actually see that I have the proper email. Now, what's cool about this is that I've passed from the Dynamic Ops Cloud Automation Center the properties necessary to send all of the necessary information through the runbook. So we have our machine owner, what's the provisioning group, and you'll notice this message, demo of email notification through orchestrator. That's actually a custom property that we hard-coded as part of the blueprint. So it could be anything I wanted to put in here again, static, user inputted, or dynamically calculated. And maybe I could go out to a third party system and say, well, if it's this type of message code, put in a custom string. We could easily provide that as well. So now the ramifications of this are huge. I have a generic set of runbooks where I don't have to create redundant runbooks based on just subtle difference in properties. So I minimize the amount of runbooks are needed. I can also highly parameterize them so I can run any sort of information through them as needed all based on a user-centric, business-aware context that's provided by Dynamic Ops. As you can see through the demonstration, Dynamic Ops provides a user-centric, business-aware context that we can apply to Microsoft Orchestrator runbooks. The end result becomes generic runbooks that are widely applicable across cloud and enterprise structures. Through the rich parameterization that is part of these runbooks, we can pass any sort of information that's dynamically calculated through the Dynamic Ops system and ensure that those runbooks can apply to every type of system necessary without having to pull any sort of redundancy and while keeping management overhead to its lowest point. All of these things together provide a robust cloud environment that can really provide the fastest path to cloud value. My name's Chad Jones. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you soon.